All right, Amanda. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, we wish we could have had you back on campus uh, for an in-person panel, but I understand with these times um, that that kind of changes, and I appreciate your willingness to kind of be here with us virtually today on this So You Want to Work With Kids panel uh, where we can really talk to uh, some of our current students and alumni about what people are doing and maybe how they can make a difference in kids' lives. So why don't you tell us, uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit of background and what you're up to now. Okay, so my name is Amanda Parr. Um, I graduated from Morningside in 2018 um, with a major in counseling psychology, a minor in sociology, and a cluster in education. Um, I went directly from Morningside to USD um, for the school psychology program. I am currently in my second year doing that, um, and that's two out of three years. Um, third year being a internship um, where you're kind of off on your own, but you're just doing um, limited communications with your professors, but you're essentially just doing the job of a school psych, um, which I'm currently in like the job search process. Um, but the second year is mainly practicum where you're performing school psych duties, but you're um, under the supervision of a school psych currently practicing. Very cool. Very cool. So. Talk to me a little bit about what it's been like kind of transitioning from Morningside into that program, um, both what was that first year like and now what you're doing, obviously, and then getting excited for that third year step. What does the day-to-day -day look like as far as a graduate student? What should students be prepared for? Um, so I think Morningside actually did a fantastic job at preparing from undergrad to graduate school. Um, I had the opportunity to do internship for my full, I wanna say it was full senior year. Um, and I did that with the Project Aware Mental Health Grant in Sioux City. Um, so that really got me into the mental health field. Um, I also did my senior thesis on um, family functioning and um, children with uh, learning disabilities. So that also fed right into graduate school and what I was focusing on. Um, I also, with my counseling psychology degree, had a class um, on intelligence and that I got the opportunity to learn how to do the WACE, which is an adult intelligence scale. Um, and as a school psych, I perform children intelligence skills all the time. Um, so that was like a perfect feeder into um, graduate school. Uh, what my day to day looks like kind of ranges. I think the amazing thing about a school psych is your day to day never looks the same. Um, and I actually really enjoy that. I don't like a lot of repetitiveness. Um, the overall arching uh, responsibility of a school psych is to do evaluations um, to see whether students qualify for special education services. Um, so that's your main goal. Now, within that is a very broad range of for example i may do testing um i'll do observations i'll do parent interview teacher interviews um i'll talk to the kiddos themselves um so a lot of student interaction but also a lot of collaboration and consultation with staff as well nice yeah so kind of that blend of your studies but also kind of getting into the field and doing some practicing as well yes so talk to me about um, what you did as far as looking for graduate schools. What did that process look like, the application period? What kind of weight on your mind? Maybe if we have students that are going to watch this, um, thinking about future graduate school, um, how did you weigh that program? How did you navigate some of that? So I um, <laughs> will be honest, I put all my eggs in one basket. Highly recommend not doing that. Um, I also procrastinated a little, which I definitely highly recommend not doing that. Um, so in order to get into my program, you have to take the GRE, um, which I say is like the ACT on steroids. <laughs> and I studied for a very long time for that. Um, I took it in December, applications were due in April, um, but it does cost money, it takes time to study. Um, so I highly recommend to get started even junior year, I know that may sound a little early, um, but I definitely recommend doing that sooner rather than later so that if you, for example, don't pass the GRE the first time, you have time to study again and you have time to retake it. Um, 
So yeah, just don't procrastinate on that. That's definitely, um, but with programs, I stuck around where I wanted to live. Um, there are online options, but um, I looked at USD and I looked at UNI, um, which is also in Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, talk to me a little bit about um, the highlights and the, some of the challenges that you're going through. I know what it's like to be a graduate student and that can be trying, but also looking forward to what you get to do day to day and maybe talk about some of those highlights and some of the challenges um, and how you're able to overcome them. So highlights first. Um, I love working with kids. I especially love working with kids with disabilities. There's just a certain way, thing about them that they just bring a smile to your face no matter what. Like you're having a terrible day, a kid will come in and just say something that just flips your switch into a good day. Um, a perfect example is I had a student who I was doing social skills groups with them, um, which is something that I choose to do, not all school psychs do, um, but I definitely love doing that. So I do take advantage of being able to do that. Um, and I had a kid who we set a timer. So when we're done with the timer, that's when we're done with our group. And when it went off, he put it back to five minutes and he goes, okay, when this timer goes off, you have to get out of this office and you have to go do adult stuff. Cause all you do is stay in here and play with us all day. <laughs> So <laughs> that's definitely, you know, <laughs> something that adults are never going to say something funny like that to you. Um, definitely love working with students. Um, challenges, I definitely think the hardest challenge to overcome is working with teachers. Um, you do a lot of things, you, re you require them to do things, you have to interview them. Sometimes you'll ask them to do rating scales. Um, in Iowa, we are RTI, so um, we have to do interventions before we evaluate students. So we have to ask them to do things outside of their scope. Perfect. Well, Amanda, if you could tell me just a little bit about um, any current students that are listening to this video, what are some of the things and steps that they could take uh, to really get involved, whether it's on campus or in the community, to gain that experience to set them up to set them up. Uh, to be successful in grad, graduate school, what would you recommend? Um, so I definitely think that experiences are priceless. Um, one of the Morningside specific examples that I have is I did an education cluster. Um, so I got to see kind of the background of what teachers did, which totally diverted me from wanting to be a teacher. Um, lesson planning is not my forte. And um, so that kind of knocked out. I knew I wanted to work with students and um, I wanted to be in the schools, went and did that education, learned that that was not what I wanted. Um, so kind of um, getting that opportunity to try out different things, which is, I think Morningside does a great um, thing of. Now, one of the education classes that I did really, really love um, was a student with exceptionality classes. I'm not sure if that's the name of it, um, but it focuses on students with special education, special needs. Um, and that has a, um, what's the word for it, where you have to go out and you have to actually have hours with students with disabilities or adults with disabilities. Right. Um, I did my time with Opportunities Unlimited, and that was something that I truly enjoyed. Um, and I think if that's not your route, that will be very obvious with you. Um, some people are very uncomfortable with people with disabilities, and if that's you that's okay um but i think having that opportunity will be blatantly obviously whether i really like this or i really don't um and like i said internships talk with your professors talk with your um counselors and see what opportunities there are um i got into the schools multiple times through my education cluster and through my psychology um route for like for example a developmental class i worked with um children and so I think there's a lot of opportunities through Morningside um, that give you the opportunity to work with children because you need to work with children. There's a, you know, I think I like kids and then there's actually working with kids. Um, so those, like I said, those experiences are definitely priceless and Morningside does a great job of letting you have those experiences. Perfect. Yeah, and it is. It's still um, SPED 208, the survey of exceptionalities. Okay, so, I was not far off. <laughs> exactly right. And you do a practicum where you get in some real world experience. So Amanda, um, one of the last things that I would just offer up to you, 
Um, is there any general advice that you would give students that are maybe making this decision? Like you said, I thought it was really valuable to take those classes, um, especially giving the educational side of it and classes that are going to give you those experiences. But any other general advice, information, resources, things that you found helpful um, to ultimately make you um, or help you make that decision of what you wanted to go into that you'd like to share with these students listening to this? Um, I think taking the time to really sit down and think about classes, no, not just to knock out, you know, your gen eds, not just to take a class because to get a credit, um, but really sit down and think about what your main goal is. Um, I know when I first went into Morningside, my intention was to be a substance abuse counselor and through my experiences, through doing some of my counseling um, classes, I kind of learned and I thought and I, you know, decided this wasn't necessarily for me. And then I sat down and I had multiple conversations with my professors. Um, I think those are also a priceless thing that you can have is your professors will work with you. They will help you. They want you to succeed and they don't want you to get a degree and not, you know, use it. Um, so I definitely think having conversations, conversations with your professors um, helped me kind of navigate where I wanted to be how I wanted to do it. Um, I also had the opportunity to be on a peer mentoring um, team or something, something like that, um, where I got to work as a senior. I got to work with sophomores and juniors um, and kind of help them navigate Morningside. That was a great opportunity. So to get involved as a sophomore and junior, um, having that mentor and then becoming one, um, was a great way to navigate and help other students and you know have students help you because students are also going through this um your class is also trying to figure out what's going on and how to navigate it so maybe a student or a classmate has gone through something and they can give you that experience where you wouldn't have known it if you hadn't talked to them yeah yeah no that's great advice i think being able to learn from your peers and being able to reach out and talk with your faculty members i think that's all very good advice, especially for early on students that are just now kind of navigating that. But well, Amanda, I really appreciate you taking the time sharing that insight um, with our students and talking a little bit about what it's like to be a graduate student pursuing um, school psychology. Um, and I just thank you for your time. I really appreciate it.